Hey everybody, this is round one of the playthrough of Burnt Offerings, the local heroes scenario. So this is scenario two, round one. I've decided that uh, the general store is probably the, the place to start. This is because the benefit to the local store, or the general store, is if you encounter anything other than an armor, an item, or a weapon after the exploration, you may explore again. So free exploration seems pretty good to me. Also, the general store only has two monsters, and it's got like two weapons, armor, an I uh, three items, an ally, two allies, really. One ally here, and then one, one random ally per deck. Customers can find a little bit of everything in the town's best-stocked general store. Mundane goods, weapons, and armor, even the occasional potion. Aside from wares, both common and extraordinary, the shop also serves as a gathering place for all sorts of town gossip, and the store's owner is among the best informed and connected folks around. I think a quick stop off at the store will be beneficial. I'm going to start with my tank as usual, even though there's just two monsters. Uh, I just feel like sending Valeros in first to clear the area could be good. So I'm incrementing the, or just turning over a timer deck there, and I've already drawn his initial hand which is really actually quite good. Sword, an armor, uh, well, a shield, potion of hiding. I don't know if he'll ever use that, really, but and also a blessing. So that's a pretty good starting hand for Valeros. I, I like for him to have an armor and, and a weapon. Well, he has to have a weapon because his favorite card type is weapon. So that's a necessity, but he has, he has fulfilled that. So he's going to explore now at the general store. And... Well, he's encountered a weapon, so no free, no free exploration. But this could be really good. It's a bastard sword. It's two-handed weapon, so he can't use an armor with this or a shield rather with this. But for his combat check, he could reveal this for an extra D10. Well, that's even better than his long sword, which is a D8. So this could be a really, really good acquisition for him if he can get it. Strength and uh, strength and melee. 8. I mean, his strength is 10, and his melee gives him an automatic 3 bonus. But rolling a 5 on a d10, I mean, it's it's possible to, to mess that up. And this is a really good bonus. I think I'm going to do the, the the unheard of here and and discard this blessing for, for a change. Not to explore, but to add a die to the check. This This card is obscenely vague as to what it actually does, but it says, discard the card to add one die to a check. It doesn't say what kind of die, so if I were if I were playing on easy mode, I would just add a d12, but I'm not, so I'm just going to assume that what it means is that if I'm rolling a d10 for his strength, which I am, then I roll 2d10 instead of 1d10. And he's, of course, got a plus 3 for his melee anyway. Does this work with melee? I mean, this, the weapon does. Does the check to acquire? Yes, it does. Strength and melee. So he's, only, he's already got a 3. That's an 8. So he needs to roll 5 on 2d10. He rolls a 6 on 1d10. So he's, he's fine. So he acquires the bastard sword into his hand, which is great. Because that's, I mean, that's a huge bonus. And so he's got 4 cards in his hand, so he doesn't have to discard down or anything. Or draw a new a new card, so that's sort of a zero sum round, which is is better than something that costs. So that that was all right. That was a good start. I'm gonna send Sioni in to do a little bit of shopping as well. I need to draw her card, uh, to her hand. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now, once again, her favored card type is a spell. This is her initial hand. There are no spells in this hand, so I'm going to recharge that hand and draw a new hand. Three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. All of her spells. No, not all of them. Two of her spells are in this deck, which is fine, because the one that I really care about is Force Missile. Without Force Missile, she is basically a non-combatant. Um, so she's got a little bit of armor, she's got force missile, she's got invisibility, so she can evade a combat if she needs to. So that was a 
that's a fine hand to start with. I didn't flip over a timer deck for her, so I'll flip over a timer card, and then we're going to explore. Potion of Ghostly Form. I had this last game, I think, last scenario, and Valeros, I think, didn't, wasn't able to acquire it. This is an intelligence check. Intelligence isn't necessarily Sione's uh, best attribute, not her worst. It's a d6. Uh, this is actually exactly the kind of scenario that I'd add. I, I took the bonus, the skill bonus, for Valeros to give him a plus one in intelligence. It was for this kind of thing. But that's okay. Uh, we'll see how Sione does. Three. So she fails and does not get the potion of ghostly form. So that, I think, was a zero-sum round as well. I could discard a blessing card from her. Yeah, I could do that. Discard a blessing to explore again. I think I will. I think I'll do that. Okay, so she's exploring again because she discarded that. Now here's an ally, and this could be a really good ally for her. Recharge this card to add 1d4 to Arcane or Divine. And it takes a Charisma Arcane check. That is Sione's absolute specialty. She has a plus 2 to this check from the get-go, because it's an Arcane, to her Arcane check. And her Arcane die is a d12. So she needs to roll a 4 on this d12. She rolled a 12 on that d12, thereby acquiring the ally. So that goes straight into her hand. So that's good, because that makes this round zero sum. That's the wrong hand. That's good, because that makes this round a zero sum for her, because she discarded that blessing, but now she's won up by acquiring that ally. So that's really good. Now let's check that global rule again. If you encounter anything other than armor, item, or weapon, you can explore again for free. So we get to explore again for free. That's great as well. There's a weapon, so no more free exploration. And frankly, I don't think there's any chance she's going to be able to get this. I did give her that plus one on her strength uh, die, but it's an eight to acquire a battle axe, and she's got a d4 plus one. Literally no way for her to get this. That's not it's not true. There, there's a way. And that way would be to call in her standard bearer to add 1d6 to a non-combat strength check, which is exactly what this is. So that would be a d6 for the standard bearer, a d4 because, because she has a d4 as her strength, and then an automatic 1. So I, I feel like this is worth it. So what is this? This is a, uh, and this is just a recharge. So it's honestly, it's kind of silly not to. So, cause that, so that goes to the bottom of her draw deck. That's not even a discard. So let's, let's, let's give that a go. So first I'll roll the d4. She got a 2 on the d4, so that's 3 total so far. So she needs to roll a 5 on this d6. It could happen. 4. It didn't happen. So that's 6, 7. Yeah, there's no way around it. That just didn't, that didn't succeed. However, it was worth a shot. And technically, we're still zero-sum. Because yes, we had to draw a card. But we know that the her ally just went to the bottom of that deck, so we're no, we're no worse for the wear. And she's got another spell, which is great, because those recharge as well for her. Okay, next up is Valeros, so we'll turn over a timer card and make sure that he's got everything that he needs, he does. So he will draw, he will explore. And this is a armor, so again, no free exploration after this. But he does get to do a constitution or fortitude check. Well, his potion isn't going to help with that. Nothing he has will help with that. 
So a constitution, I think, is a d6 for him, if I'm recalling. No, it's a d8. He has a fighting chance to get this, this shield. Seems like a really nice object to have. So he needs to roll a 6 on this d8. And he rolled a 3. Halfway there, but not quite. Now it's Sioni's turn, so we're incrementing the deck. I just feel like I'm flying through this blessing deck, which does make me nervous. But, I mean, that's how this game is played, and we can't... I guess Sioni could have attempted to close this after acquiring the ally, but I forgot. And that's a special condition of, of this scenario. That doesn't... It's not usually like that. It's usually a henchman or, a, well, a villain. Okay, so we've flipped that card. Uh, yeah, I think we're good to go. So she'll take a look at this, and it is a monster. Well, I don't mind so much about that because... Because she's got an attack spell. So the difficulty to defeat the scout is increased by the adventure deck number of the current scenario. Well, the adventure is adventure one. So the difficulty to succeed against this mean looking scout is not eight, but nine. Uh, so she, she could use her force missile to take care of this dude herself. Um, or she could just evade this, this creature and let Valeros take care of the scout. I think I'm leaning towards that because I want to save Sioni for something that requires a magical attack should that ever come up. So I think it makes sense for her to evade right now. Now, normally you'd have to discard this to evade, but she's Sioni. She automatically succeeds on a check to recharge. So I just put that at the bottom of her deck. Not a problem. And now the the um, the creature is still there, but Sioni, uh, um, Valeros can step forward. It's not his turn, but you're allowed to try to defeat a Bane uh, out of your turn as long as the character who drew the bane is able to make to 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 attempt the the check is that true or is that a distortion of the rule uh, i guess i'll have to look it says any character at that location can attempt one or more of the checks as long as the character who encountered the bane attempts at least one of them okay well she did not attempt at least one of them so maybe that's not how it sounds like that's not the rule that changes my that changes the way that i i'm approaching this because um yeah i thought she could evade and then just have valeros do this but what it's actually saying is that she would have to attack and then she's able to have valeros attempt if she if her attack fails and that's that's different than evading. So I think I might have played that wrong at some point in the last scenario. So I guess I'm recharging her her force missile. I should probably look at it first. Force missile is arcane and 2d4. Arcane is d12 for her, plus a free 2 for arcane. And then 2d4. I only have 1d4, so I'll just roll it twice. So she's looking for, this is a 9, not an 8. So she's looking to get a 7 between 2d4 and a d12. That's a 3. And that's a 1, so that's 4. So she's up to 6 now. So she is um, looking to get a 3 on her d12. 3 or more. Uh, and I, I hate it when it does that. But, I mean, I think that's pretty solidly either a 9 or a 5 or a 6. I mean, I don't, yeah, I feel I feel okay about that in general, just saying that that was a success. I guess I could roll it again just to make sure. Yeah, 12, yeah. So it's a d definitive success. Defeated the monster. Normally, that's just kind of, you don't really get, 
Oh, oh, I didn't see this. Before the encounter, the scout deals 1d4 minus 1 ranged combat. That's no good. No good at all. Oh, man, so that's a 4 minus 1, so 3 damage to Sioni before anything even starts. Well, luckily we have this mirror image card that I've, I've been looking at. If you're dealt damage by a monster during your turn, you may discard this card to roll a d4. Anything other than one negates the damage. Okay, so I'm recharging that card because it's a spell for Sioni. I'm going to roll this, and hopefully she doesn't roll a 1. She rolled a 4. Therefore, she takes no damage. Boy, did that feel good. That felt really good. So as I was saying, normally there's no real reward for defeating a monster other than just you're, you have the right to pat yourself on the back. However, because we are in the general store and we did not encounter an item, armor, or weapon, we get free exploration. So Sione gets to explore again, and this time she turns over a potion of ruggedness for an intelligence check of six. She can take this home with her. So. Her intelligence is a d6. I don't feel like she's probably going to get this. She rolled a 1. Yeah, that's the opposite of what she needed on the die. Uh, let me just make sure that about her intelligence. Yeah, that's a d6. So she doesn't get the potion. That was an item card, so she doesn't get any more free exploration. She's down to 4 cards in her hand, but they were both recharged, so I don't feel bad about having to draw more, uh, so she's good to go now. Now it's Valeros' turn. Draw a Blessing card. Uh, if nothing else, we're, we're chipping away through this location. We've only got three more cards. It's taking maybe a little bit longer than probably it should, but I don't know, maybe I'm just feeling paranoid a little bit um, about that timer. I'm always, I'm always worried about the timer. Okay, Blast Stone. I actually hate these things, but it's an intelligence of four. His intelligence is a d4, but he's got that skill bonus now because he completed the previous scenario of plus one. So he has a one. He only needs to roll a three on this d4. And he rolled a four. So he actually acquires the, the Blast Stone. That's pretty fancy for him. I think that's the first... Uh, uh, no, it's probably not the first item he's ever gotten. Um, okay, it doesn't look, unfortunately, like he can actually do anything. He can't get any free exploration. I think he's going to have to discard this stupid blast stone. Uh, because he's got to discard down to his hand size. So, I mean, he'll get it back, you know, or it, rather, it is still there, I guess. Let me look. He doesn't have any items to start with, does he? Yeah, he has two items. So he could he could choose that after this scenario when I'm rebuilding his deck, I could throw a blast stone in there. I probably won't because they're they're cards that you have to banish in order to use and they're just a D4 bonus, so it's I don't really feel that great about it as a card, but that's that's his turn, I guess. Okay. Another timer card turned over. Sioni's turn. I mean, there's got to be another monster in here somewhere. And she's found it. Okay, this could be bad. Because this is a combat card, and she doesn't have any combat cards left. I don't think. She's got Fortitude, she's got a Sage, she's got, she does have Invisibility, so she could evade. That might be what I do. I might evade. And apparently, to evade... I just shuffle this back into the deck, which is kind of frustrating, I guess. Um, you have the damage by... Okay, the zombie is immune to the mental and poison. Okay, fine. Have the damage dealt by the zombie, rounding up. If undefeated, each other character at this location summons and encounters a zombie. I don't know if evade overrides the undefeated keyword. If you evade it, does the monster count as undefeated? I feel like it does. I don't necessarily want to multiply the number of zombies here. 
I think instead of evading, I'm just going to have her discard her blessing card. Which gives her the power to use her arcane die plus a d6 in combat. Actually, do I want to discard her blessing or should I just get rid of this fortitude thing? Yeah, all this potion does is choose a different character to do your fortitude check for you. I think I might keep that blessing. Now, you know what? I'm going to I'm I'm going to just go with go with what I'm doing. Why not? Okay. So, she's got this to cast her spell with. She is in the same location as Valeros. One of his special features is that he can give a fellow PC a d4 to their combat. So she's hoping to get a 9 on all of these die. I'll start with a d4. She rolls a 1. Not a great start, admittedly. Although I should say she has a plus 2 to her arcane, so in a sense she has rolled a 3. If we, if we just pretend like, yeah, if we integrate that bonus. So she's rolled a 3 essentially. So we're looking for 6 now on a d6 and a d12. One, not a great, not, <laughs> this is not going well. So now we're looking at a five on a D12. And she got an 11. Whew. Okay, wow, that was scary. Um, so that is defeated. So we don't have to pay attention to any of the special conditions. He goes back in the box. And it wasn't an item, it wasn't a weapon, it wasn't an armor. We're in the general store, so we get free exploration after that encounter. So I think this is going to be... Um, actually, I don't know what this is going to be. Oh, it's an ally. Okay. So this is an arcane check, is going to be the best option for Sioni. Seven. So she's already got a two on her arcane check because of her bonus for arcane. So she only needs a five on this d12. I feel like I just said that recently. Seven. She acquires the toad. This is a cool one. The, the bury this card to put a spell from your discard pile back into your hand. That's really useful. Burying just means you put it off to the side. It doesn't go into your discard. It doesn't go into your... No, it doesn't go into your draw deck. It just goes off to the side and you get it back after the scenario. But that actually makes this round a little bit better because now she doesn't have to draw up to six. However, she does have the opportunity now to close this location. And the cost to close a location is to banish a card from your hand. That hurts. because so that means a card that we just acquired, well, a, car, a card, is going to go back into the box. I think I'm going to send this wonderful sage back to the box. And I say that because I know that we have a lot of allies in this in this scenario. And I feel like that's I yeah, I feel she's probably the the one that that well, I haven't used this one really a whole lot. Oh, but she does do intelligence. Do I have another well, I don't want to get rid of my uh acolyte. I just got her. This guy gets banished anyway. He's a potion. He's an item, though, and he's harder to come by than a sage. Yep, okay. F figured that one out. Sage goes away, and the location is now closed. Great. Well, that's, that's one thing that we don't have to worry about. Um, there are other places to visit. Uh, and I think probably the next one I'm going to send Sioni to is the Academy, because the Academy has five spells, and I really would love to see what kind of spells are around for her to explore. But that'll be Sioni. I think next round I'm going to have, or next session, I'm going to have Valeros go to the waterfront. I think that's, that's, the, that's what's in his immediate future. Okay. So um, that's uh, we've closed the location, so I'll, I'll end the video here for now, and I'll continue playing next time. Thanks for watching.